Oh, I don't remember it getting this cold last year. I probably say that every year. Welcome to another video. Um, in this video, we're going to build my Scott Sawtooth. Um, I wanted to do this video a little bit differently than usual, um, as requested, and spend more time talking about exactly what I what I've bought and what I'm putting on this bike and how much it cost. Um, and whilst doing that, I thought, why don't I try and make this as cheap as possible and share that all with you? Um, so for a change, I'm going to tell you exactly how much my bike costs. Uh, usually, I don't want to even know myself. So this is my Scott Sawtooth. Um, I bought this frame on eBay for £10. Um, like I said, the last video we spent uh, restoring it, I showed you the best way to do that. If you haven't seen that video, it is linked here. Well then, instead of me continuing to waffle on, um, let's, uh, let's get going. So in the spirit of trying to save money and to make this as cheap as possible, um, the actual headset that was on this bike, the bearings inside looked pretty good. It was dirty as hell and needed a lot of cleaning, um, but they were fine. On the other hand, the actual cups on the outside and some of the actual parts were kind of rusty, a little bit chipped. Um, so what I did was chuck them in some of wrapper rust, um, probably for about 24 hours. Um, and then something that doesn't happen very often happened. Uh, the evapora seemed to have got underneath the paint and as soon as I got it out and started trying to clean them up, uh, the paint kind of just came off. So I decided just to kind of like take it as it was and hit it with a wire brush and kind of just scrub off basically everything that was loose. Uh, anything that wasn't loose, I just kind of left it as it was. Um, but yeah, just give it a good scrub down. Uh, we'll touch this up with something later on in the video um, to try and kind of repair it a bit, but uh, yeah. It's still solid, so I'm sure it'll be fine. The next thing was the seat post. Um, again, I want to try and make this build as cheap as possible. This uh, this bike actually came with uh, the headset, uh, a stem, handlebars, seat and seat post. I think that was it. Um, the stem and the handlebars I'm not going to use. Uh, I'll probably use them on future builds eventually. They seem pretty good. Um, but the actual uh, seat posts, seat post, seat post, isn't it? So we'll use that. To clean it, I literally just used WD-40 and some uh, a wide brush again, uh, uh, and some muck off just to kind of like, yeah, get any of the dirt off. But it wasn't like really rusty or anything like that, so it was fine. I'm gonna be putting a char spoon on this build. Um, I love char spoons. This one's camouflaged, uh, so it makes it extra cool, I guess. Let's go back to the headset now. Um, I'm gonna use rust converter on it. This is more of an experiment than a thing that you should do yourself. Um, reason being is the fact that this stuff is good to uh, paint onto rust and it converts it and stops it in the tracks. We talked about it a bit in the last video. Um, but I thought, I wonder if you just paint it onto the steel, it would kind of coat it and attach to it. And then like, you can kind of use it as a primer. So I'm wondering if it will kind of, essentially will it protect it and keep it as it is? Uh, and most importantly, will it turn black and then kind of look cool? So. Uh, well, let's have a look. So I just use a cotton bud or a Q-tip, depending on where in the world you're from, and uh, just use that to kind of like paint it on, really. Um, left it, I think it took a good like 10 hours or so for it to actually go completely black, but um, it did work, and I'm really happy with the results. So I packed it with grease. Um, these are kind of like the sealed, almost like sealed bearings. They're not sealed. They've got like a plastic ring you put on top, but they're kind of sealed. And um, so I put these back on the bike and we put the fork on. Once I put the fork on the bike, I realized that I potentially misplaced one of the spacers because uh, when I screwed on the top part, um, it, it left the gap. I don't think I lost the place. Perhaps, actually, the more I think about it, potentially it didn't come with one, but it's fine. I use this purple spacer because purple's sick and it's got purple on the bike and we're gonna use some anodized purple stuff for this build, so it made sense. Now that stuff's all out of the way, let's go on to the fun stuff. I'm gonna be putting a modern stem on this bike. To do that, I need to use a stem converter. Uh, I recently discovered, actually, uh, one of my followers on Instagram informed me that in Turkish, these are called bike carrots, which is one of the greatest things I learned this week. Next is the stem. I love using old BMX stems on mountain bikes. As we know from this channel, 
nearly every time I do it, for some reason or not, I end up not using it. And that's what happens today. So this is the stem I was going to use. Uh, I put it on the bike, it looked great. I love the purple bolts. Um, but then when I actually went to put the Jeff on there, which again is a handlebar I keep going to use and I'm not using, uh, I realized that I bought the wrong size stem for the, for the handlebars. But that's fine, I'm only human. So I used these ones instead, which are the OGs by On One. So the same brand, um, but just different model. Um, this, was the own, this was the other bar I was thinking about using. So essentially fate decided for me in the end anyway. Quick one before I go any further, this is my new website. On this website, you can find all my stickers and my merch. Uh, you can find stickers like this one, and this one, and this one, and there's loads more as well. So if uh, you want some stickers and you want to support the channel, um, this is the website. I get asked this quite a bit about kind of chain line and where the chain ring should go and the bottom bracket sizes and all this sort of stuff. Um, it's pretty much down to the frame. So it's very hard to give you a kind of a, an exact kind of guide. A lot of these mountain bikes would have came with three cogs on the front of the bike. Um, so naturally that means that the bottom bracket needs to be wider to accommodate those three rings. In this case, we want to make it a one by, so I need to make that narrower so that the chain is in the middle of the, the cassette for the back. Aeroplane. So in this case, I'm going to be using a 102 BB. Um, this bike would probably have come with something like a 115 maybe or something around that kind of mark. Uh, so one and two will bring it kind of in closer to the actual frame itself. For the cranks, I wanted to get something that was kind of like kind of light, kind of cool looking, um, but uh, obviously not too expensive. So I found these on eBay, which are derivative. Uh, these ones are very clearly not the right color anymore and two slightly different colors. Well, they've definitely been sun bleached. Um, I wasn't that mad about that. I think they look kind of cool. Uh, I think they would have been probably black and they've kind of gone green and the one's gone a bit more green. Uh, but yeah, they're pretty cool. They're very light. The chain ring itself is going to be a works component chain ring. Uh, these chain rings are super strong. They're designed for downhill but racing and stuff like that. So you know they're going to last a long time. And they come in some nice anodized colors. You can see here that I've actually got the chain ring on the inside of the crank at the moment. Um, I actually find out a little later on that it does work the chain line on the outside for a change, which was super nice. Little win. I'm using these crank bolts and crank bolt cups from medium uh, the gold I think I should have probably used like a green or a purple to kind of match the rest of the bike but um, I had gold and that looks good I'm using a SRAM X3 derailleur on this build these are seven or eight speed I'm gonna run at eight speed the last thing I'm going to add to the build in this video, at least, is going to be the wheels themselves. Uh, I'm using these Pro Light video uh, wheels that I think I got them from like Halfords or something like that. Um, I've been using these for a while now on a couple of different builds, and they're solid and they're great for like commuting. And I'm a big dude, so they're nice and strong. They're probably a little bit heavy, but you know, so am I. Tires are the Billy Bonkers that I was actually putting on the Rally um, M tracks. But Billy Bonkers, I'm kind of like a, a love-hate relationship with them. Um, they're kind of, they're a little bit noisy and I think they're probably a little bit overkill a lot of the time on road. Um, but we're about to hit the, well, we're kind of in it already. The winter months are here in England. Um, so they're quite good for wet and kind of icy and then muddy conditions if the roads get dirty and paths and whatever else. So they're, they're quite a good tyre for the winter. So that's why we're picking them. For now, we'll leave the build like this. So if you've been following along with the price on the video, uh, you know that we've probably hit around 400 pounds by now. Um, that obviously isn't cheap, and that's what this was all meant to be. But if you go back and watch my, or if you've already watched my kind of how I buy my parts, um, you can minus the wheels, because um, the only reason I have these wheels on there is because I already have them. Um, but I wanted to be transparent how much they cost. 
but you could have the prick wheels that I had in the previous video, which were like 35 pounds. And the tires, you don't need Billy Bonkers. You could get any sort of tires. If you watch my parts video again, um, you can see lots of cheap tires on there and lots of advice I gave for tires. Um, so you could probably minus this price from 400 pounds down to like 200 and something pounds by just changing out the tires and the wheels but I have them and uh, I wanted to put them on the build and that's the end of the video um, if you enjoyed what you watched and you want to see the rest of this build I highly suggest you uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, if you can't wait until next week uh, why don't you watch uh, this video here this one is a very good one um, and don't forget, if you do want some stickers, the link's here, or the website's here, and the link's below. Um, but don't worry, it's not going to be a week until the next video. I'll probably release it Wednesday, uh, and if this is the future and the videos are already out, um, click on my face. Go and have a look at the videos. It'll be there somewhere.